What you see here is an artificial neural network in action. It isn't as complex as the networks that transcribe your voice, filter Instagram photos, or crush humans at chess, but it works in the same way. And although this isn't the usual way neural networks are pictured, I think it provides a better intuition for how artificial intelligences make decisions in our lives. The term artificial intelligence, or AI, brings to mind images of evil computers and superhuman robots, but it really just describes any sort of computer program which makes decisions. Sorting pictures of cats from pictures of dogs? That's artificial intelligence. Deciding on the fastest route from your work to your home? The same thing. And these decisions do not necessarily need to be based on complex data. Let's imagine a robot tending some hypothetical plants, one that makes red berries and the other blue. A robot could try and tell them apart with a camera and some image processing, but if one plant always makes heavier berries than the other, all we need is a scale. In this case, we'll plot the weight of a few hundred berries on a number line. If the bot decides that any berry to the right of this point is red, and any to the left is blue, it will almost always be correct. An AI researcher would call this point, which delineates one decision from another, the decision boundary. To make this a little harder, let's imagine that as spring rainfall increases, the berries of both plants grow larger. This gums up our number line a bit, but plot the berries along two axes for weight and rainfall, and it is still fairly easy to draw a straight line between them. For anyone who has taken a statistics class, this should look very familiar as a linear regression. Technically, it is called the logistic regression because it matters which side of the line each data point winds up on. But logistic or linear, these sorts of models are probably the most used variety of artificial intelligence in existence today. And indeed, the term machine learning really just describes the use of statistics in AI at all. Now, before we proceed further, I'm going to change the way we visualize the decision boundary. Instead of rotating the line to fit the data, I'd like us to rotate the data to fit a predetermined line. This doesn't really change the math at all, and might even look silly at the moment, but I promise it'll make things clearer as our straight lines start to become limited. Such limitations show when we send our robot to climates with greater rainfall. At some point, water stops being the limiting factor, and the plants produce the same size berry no matter what. This curve makes a simple linear model less instantly useful. But all we really have to do is straighten the data a little before rotating it. In this case, I'm just applying the hyperbolic tangent function, and we'll continue doing so for the rest of the video. Brief aside, because simple rotations translations, scalings, and skewings all preserve straight lines, they are called linear transformations. And because the hyperbolic tangent, which straightens a bent line in our data, would also bend any straight lines, it is considered a nonlinear transformation. This combination of linear and nonlinear transformations is really at the core of this video and will be needed again in a moment. Specifically, when we get even more imaginary data and see that the plants eventually become overwatered and start to produce smaller berries again. Now, us humans could try and straighten this data as well by coming up with a more complex nonlinear transformation. But as we try to draw ever more intricate decision boundaries, such as between images, it quickly becomes impossible to pick out these curves yourself. Instead, I'd like you to pause and think about how you might try to straighten this data using only the mathematical tools we've already given our berry-loving robot. Ready for an answer? We can add an additional linear transformation at the beginning before we straighten the data. Now the same nonlinear transformation can remove the curve entirely. And the last linear transformation has an easy time separating the data to either side of our boundary. Let's watch that animation again because it took me so long to make. Rotate. Squash. And rotate again. And finally, 
because we might as well, the same nonlinear transform one last time clusters our data points very nicely. Believe it or not, what you've just seen is a neural network, assembled for this animation using the same tools researchers use today to build even the most complex AIs. And despite having only two layers of one linear and nonlinear transformation each, separating the two sides of this curve is the least it can do. I can't think of a good explanation for how plants would produce this new example, but it's illustrative nonetheless. If we try to sort red from blue using our existing code, it doesn't work out so well, but it turns out to be a very easy fix. Move into three dimensions. And ta-da! The steps are the same. Transform linearly, then apply the hyperbolic tangent, and repeat once more each. Researchers have figured out that any decision boundary at all, no matter how complex, can be represented with nothing more than alternating linear and nonlinear transformations, as long as you iterate enough times and in a high enough dimension. And conceptualizing neural networks as iterated linear and nonlinear statistical models is absolutely correct. So then why are they called neural networks? Well, knowing that modern AIs often transform data through thousands of dimensions, it's not surprising that we would want to draw out a diagram for a process which is not limited to three axes. To start out with, we have two numbers, weight and rainfall, which we will show as dots. These are linearly transformed into three numbers. This is really done with a matrix, but visually is like mixing each of the two values together three times. The three new numbers are nonlinearly altered. And then they get mixed up again, this time resulting in a single number, which is also transformed. What we've arrived at is a familiar diagram, a network of nodes connected by edges. One of the first times anyone built a network like this, they thought of the nodes like neurons in the brain connected by axons, and the metaphor stuck, hence an artificial neural network. With this diagram at hand, we can see how neural networks can even be applied to images. The image is first broken into its component pixels, and then each pixel is passed to a different neuron. The signals are mixed together with the same familiar layers of linear and nonlinear transformations. And we are finally left with signals indicating the likelihood of the image belonging in each different category. We can also have a neural network produce an image by taking a large number of output signals and arranging them into a grid of pixels. But as useful as the neuron metaphor is, it has major problems if taken too literally. First, because it wildly oversimplifies the role of neurons in the brain, a process we still don't remotely understand. But mainly because it confuses the idea of machine learning, a process which is nothing more than statistics, finding the model which best represents past data. And although solving for the correct linear transforms is incredibly time-consuming, expensive, and error-prone, that process, called training, is still simple at a high level. Data goes into the training algorithm, and if you're lucky, working transformation matrices come out. Then the process is done and decisions can be made. Whereas the very act of passing a signal through a biological neuron also permanently transforms the neuron itself, somehow resulting in continuous learning and skill improvement. Human learning is just not a simple statistical process. This is why I prefer avoiding biological metaphors completely and stick to thinking about iterated linear and nonlinear transformations on data found through a statistical process. It works to explain how computers can transform words into pictures, sort pictures of cats from dogs, or sort red berries from blueberries. <laughs>